a lot of times when I'm working with buyers, especially buyers of the older generation, they have the feeling that you need 20% down to buy a house. And if they don't have 20% down, they may as well just keep renting because they're not able to purchase a house. In today's market, do buyers need 20% down to purchase a house? They don't. Um, most loan programs have an option with less than 20% down. The reason 20% down is even a thing is because on a conforming conventional loan, if you're putting at least 20% down, you won't have what's called mortgage insurance in your payment, which is an insurance policy for the bank to protect you against foreclosing, to protect them against foreclosing. It's not your homeowner's insurance, it's a separate thing. So again, yes, if you can put that much down, or anytime you can put more money down, it's just math, right? Your payment's gonna be lower, so yeah, you can afford, you know, that's a great advantage to have, but it's not required, okay? You can do, if you're a first time home buyer, as little as 3% down, you know, or there's programs with five or 10, obviously, depending on what you qualify for. There are programs out there that don't require any down payment, depending on your qualifications and where the house sits. And, you know, we have access to all those things. And that's one of the things I'm always evaluating as I'm meeting with you is, okay, depending on what you're doing in your situation, what's the best loan for you? What helps you buy the most home? You know, some people think, oh, I don't need a down payment, great. but you won't qualify for the most home there because your payments are going to be higher because you finance it all. So again, there's a balance depending on what your budget is, what payment you want, and how can we get there. That's so true. And would you say also the term of the loan? If I have somebody, like when my grandparents bought a house, they fully intended to stay there for 30 years, and I think they did, and they're still there now. Right. And so some people, when they purchase a house, are planning to be here for the full 30 years. Some people I know are at this job but they know in 10 years or maybe five years, their long-term plan is to retire somewhere else near family or friends or in a different state. So if your plan, you know that you're moving in five or 10 years, mm -hmm. is the loan that's best for you sometimes different than if your plan is to stay in the same house for 30 years? It can be, and that's something we'll evaluate based off what your goals are there. Are you trying to pay this house off as quickly as possible? You know, are you, you know, can your budget afford a better? Because obviously if you do a shorter term, like a 15 year versus a 30, you'll save yourself a lot of interest, okay? You're gonna have a much higher payment because you're paying it off quicker. Your interest rates tend to be a little lower too. So that's something we can evaluate. For some people, that's not that big a deal. It's all about, well, I can only afford this a month. Okay, so we do the 30 year because that's where the lower payment will be. So yeah, as your, you know, loan advisor, that's something we'll evaluate as we go through. Yeah. That's awesome. So it really is so individual, and that's why I have every buyer come and speak with a lender first, because it really depends on their time frame, their budget, where they're going, but I think also their comfort level, because uh, me as a realtor, I always try to sell people the very best house that they want, because sure. they like it the best, yeah. and as lenders, oftentimes lenders will approve people for the most money that they can pay, because they're coming and asking us, how much can I afford? So the lender's telling them how much they can afford, but the reality is the buyer lives in their budget. And so it's important for buyers to be realistic about the budget that they're shopping for. That, I have this conversation there, right? And anybody that's worked with me before will remember me asking them this. You know, I can get you qualified for all kinds of things, okay? Probably way more than you would ever want to take on. You're the one that's gonna to want to live there and want to maybe, you know, buy groceries too. So I'll show you what that is. Your max will be way up here and here's what the payment would look like. Now where, for your budget, where are you trying to be? And sometimes, you know, those could be very different or as you're out shopping, you realize, no, what we really want is gonna be here. Well, now you kinda know, okay, here's the range and we can kinda work our way back from there. So yeah, that's, that's how we look it out. Thank you, that's so important. Yes, I have that same conversation. And it really is so important because as you're looking for a house, it's exciting to find the best thing you can afford. And a lot of times, especially with online lenders, I'll find that people see the amount that they're approved for, but they don't calculate that into what it will look like in the monthly payment, right. how it will affect their real lifestyle. Like maybe they like to go out to eat once in a while. Maybe they do other things with their money that don't necessarily show up as power, electricity, and rent, you know. Right, and if you're applying by yourself, that's one thing. If you have a significant other you're applying with, you need to have that conversation, because yeah. sometimes there's not the same goal, or what are we trying to do here, you know, and you need to be on the same page. That's so true. Yeah. 